Hello and welcome everyone to another exciting episode of the MyGBC podcast. Today we have a special guest in our virtual studio. We have another student interview with one of our talented students. And this time the program that we've chosen is architecture, which I personally know is a pretty popular program here at George Brown College. I know very few people that have done the program, but I've heard very good things. So I'm very excited to see what we are going to learn today. We'll be delving into their journey through the program, exploring their experiences and gaining valuable insights into what it's like to study architecture at George Brown. We have prepared a series of intriguing questions ranging from their academic adventures, to their future aspirations, and we'll try to uncover the nitty gritty details of their coursework, the highs and lows of their educational voyage, and even touch upon their dreams beyond graduation. So without further ado, let's get to know this exceptional student, uh, Denilyn, and gain an insider's perspective on the world of architecture. So hi, Denilyn, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. I'm excited to talk about this huge program. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And I know it's Daniel's first time doing a podcast. So I'm hoping that it's going to be as exciting for her as it is for us doing these podcasts. So yeah. let's start with a little bit of background about you and who you are. So can you tell us a little bit about what year you're in, what semester you're in, and how has it been so far? So for my program, there's the two-year program or the three-year. I was in the two-year so I would have been finished by now, but then I switched into the three year and I just finished my fifth semester. So nice. I have one more semester left until I graduate. Interesting. So yeah. the two year program would be a diploma program and the three year yeah. one would be an advanced diploma program. I assume. Yeah, correct. OK. And then you bridged from the second one, the second year to the third year. Into the third year. Yeah. OK. So that is an option, I guess, for everyone yeah. who didn't know. Actually, within the college, we have a lot of programs that you're able to kind of bridge when you realize that, okay, I want to get a higher degree perhaps. So that's an option. I know my program, Brand Design, we have that as well. So if you are into these opportunities, definitely check it out. I know a lot of programs at George Brown have that option. And so is this your first program or did you take any other post-secondary programs before coming to George Brown or here at George Brown? I took I was just straight from high school I guess the closest thing I did was a dual credit and it was with Centennial College it was during COVID it was a mm -hmm. baking so it was kind of more of just a thing for fun um straight out of high school and then after I graduated September the year of I went into architecture technology nice so did you like the cooking program how was that I, let, I found it very fun. It was during COVID, so it gave me something to do while we were at home. Nice. Um, I, the, I learned a lot of different interesting like French pastries that we Ooh, don't have often. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I love cooking programs, not because I'm a good cook, but just because I enjoy eating. So <laughs> I don't think I'll yeah. ever do it, but definitely I'll try to make friends who are in the program because yeah. you can eat a lot, which is great. Amazing. And uh, how are you finding the program so far? Do you like it or how is it like in general? It is a very difficult program, but mm -hmm. I'd say it's rewarding. Right now I'm in um, the co-op. Uh, so it's the working part. But when you're in school, the semesters are very hard, but they're like rewarding. When mm -hmm. you finish the semester and look back, you'll like realize you did a lot of great work. Yeah. It's very demanding, but you can definitely like get a job after so I'd say it's worth all of your hard effort interesting yeah I've heard that before from a couple of people that architecture in general is a program that is quite demanding and I think that's yeah. because like you do a lot of actual like projects rather than just like writing and yeah. in my experience as a designer myself doing projects actually takes a lot more time compared to like sitting down and writing yeah, an essay sure. or something um, but at the same time, I think it's very fun. Like, I don't know. I prefer projects over assignments. That are yeah. And then at the end, it's like you look back and like, oh, you know what? That was pretty cool. I'm mm -hmm. proud of my assignment. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And you build a portfolio, which is great. Yeah. And what are some of the core courses that everyone in your program takes and uh, what are they like? So every semester, there's the studio class. Um, it's called Architect and Studio. Mm -hmm. And in the studio classes, it's usually a, you get a two-hour theory lecture about 
um, like the project or what you'll be doing. And then yeah. you'll have a four hour studio time to work on your project. And usually there's like two big projects per semester and they'll be in a group. So the four hours of studio time is a lot of collaboration. And you also get feedback from the professors. Like the they'll, they'll walk around to your group. They'll you'll show them what you've done. And then um depending on how many people are in your studio, it's like the professor will spend like 10, 20 minutes with each of the groups giving feedback. So I think that one's like um it's like one of the main big ones. You put a lot of your time and effort into studio. Amazing. And your assignments, I guess, as we talked about it uh, before, it's mainly projects or do you also have like a lot of readings and essays oh, yeah. together with uh, projects? So studio, um, they're big projects like examples. We did a single residential home and then mm -hmm. we did like a little school uh, forest house and mm -hmm. a car dealership. But there are so studio is all projects like that. Yeah. Um, we have a bit more of the like boring courses, which yeah. is building code, which is very important. Like you need the building code, but it's like all readings, uh, tests, quizzes. There's also structural systems, which is math and equation. So if you don't really like math, you kind of <laughs> have to sit through it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess all programs have some courses that I assume a lot of people actually like it. But for example, for me personally, math is like, and no, yeah. no, but you have to still do it because you need it when you graduate and you actually get a job. So yeah, it's okay, like some of the equations are are like, okay, this one's easy. I can do it. And then some are just like a headache. I know. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, which course makes you feel the most excited to go to class? So I'd say um, the this course is specifically for the third year program. In the third year, you get to pick concentration. So there's like different options of uh, what type of course you want. I took concentrations in architecture one. And I'd say that class makes me feel the most excited because it's a project that you fully work on yourself. It's like pretty wide range like you can do anything creative and then in that class you your classmates will also be presenting their projects so I just like listening and seeing what other people have done it's a yeah. more engaging class rather than like a professor doing a lecture it's I think it's the only class that is like that where it's not really a lecture based and yeah. it's the students like all of your classmates are really presenting to the class Amazing. So it's more like a studio and you get to like get a lot of feedback for yourself, but also I guess like yeah. hearing everyone else getting feedback about their project could also yeah. be very helpful just because you might make the mistakes that they made. Yeah, exactly. Um, like regular studio is more one on one with yeah. um the professor, but this class mm -hmm. is like in front of everyone. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. uh, what's the hardest thing about this program? I mean, you mentioned that in general, it's quite like demanding yeah. and you need to do a lot of work. But what is the hardest thing about this program? I'd say, like, as I said, it's all projects. So there's mm -hmm. just so much work to do. And really the time management. There's usually like a multiple projects due every week. And then you have to prioritize like which one is like, the heaviest out of like the weight of grading mm -hmm. which one like will take me the longest it's a lot of um really analyzing <laughs> which yeah. project to do first because it's just endless yeah I guess yeah. yeah during these times also like the programs that are very demanding for them you definitely have to really work on your time management and organization skills yeah because if you don't that's going to make your life a bit hard. And I guess yeah. for all programs, all programs at least have enough work that you need a schedule and a proper calendar for. So, yeah. That's... And like even having fun with your calendar can also help. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole different story that I could talk <laughs> about for hours, but it's good to mention. Um, so my next question is about your co-op and placement. You mentioned that you're already um, doing it right now because you are in a semester that you have a co-op or how is it like, is it yeah. like a semester or is just next, like you do it um, besides having classes? 
So this one is in your second year, they talk about applying to the co-op. So it's a competitive co-op and mm-hmm. you apply. There's, uh, They take usually 20 to 30 students yeah. and it's like a whole process. You do an interview and you make a video about yourself and then there's like different stages. And then mm-hmm. after that, if you do get in, which I got in, we mm-hmm. do, I did my summer semester So everyone in the co-op is in this one summer semester. And then in September, you'll start your co-op job. So I just, I'm in my um, co-op working placement right now. Amazing. So like, yeah, basically, is that summer semester like a full-time semester with all courses? With all the courses. Okay. So Um, it's kind of replacing the semester that you would have been taking if you didn't do the co-op, right? Yeah, so it's um regular like if you don't do the co-op, you would have your winter semester and then your summer and then your fall. But instead, we pushed up our fall semester into the summer and then our fall is free to do our working placement. Okay, that makes sense. And how's it for you so far? Are you liking your co-op? I'm working wow. with um actually at George Brown College. I'm working with oh. one of the professors, so nice. I think it's it's quite chill. Some people mm-hmm. get like a job at a huge firm the co-op is really amazing like you can get so many opportunities and continue to work there after Mm -hmm. uh, you graduate uh I think the co-op for our technology is like a pretty big deal Mm -hmm. like if you get in it's like oh wow you got in you're pretty much like set for after you graduate nice yeah that's very interesting yeah I feel like co-op is to me like it's I haven't had it yet we're gonna mm-hmm. have a co-op semester in the future but I feel mm-hmm. like it's like already you're working so it's a very very great uh, experience but yeah. about you do you prefer working like as like a I definitely your first prefer study? working versus my um job right now is pretty similar to school but mm-hmm. I'm being paid to do school for sure yeah and I think what's really big is that we have these like assignments or projects while we're working but Mm -hmm. then it doesn't go into your personal time whereas when you're in school like all of your homework time is taking away from your personal time and like your life but I really enjoy like working I have a better balance in my life I'd say for sure yeah Yeah. well that's good news for all of our students meaning that you're gonna have more balance when you graduate yeah just stick through it and you'll get there (laughs) for sure yeah that's great news And uh, so what's the biggest or the most important thing you've learned in this program so far? Um, I'd say I have like kind of two uh, big important things. Mm -hmm. One is that you can learn no matter where your skill level is. You can continue to improve. And this, I feel like, applies to almost all the programs at the college. But like if you're a beginner and you feel discouraged, you will get there like First year, I didn't know what I was doing. And now third year, it's quite easy to me, but I'll still continue to learn. Yeah. And another big thing is that to really treat everyone with kindness and respect, like your professors, your classmates, you don't know who might be a great connection later on. Sure. Um, like I know my first year professor, I'm actually working with her now, oh. but I wouldn't have known that during first year. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's very important, like making connections with professors yeah. or even if you have like guest speakers, anybody that you see from them, yeah. definitely try to somehow connect with uh, connect with them over LinkedIn or just if you have like their email, that's even better. Uh, yeah. But keep those contacts. They always come in handy, especially for finding internships, co-ops and um, jobs. And for students, I guess like the fact that you mentioned, like if you're always active in class and like you're talking to the professor then professor knows that you're actually into this you're yeah. passionate about this so whenever they're looking for like an assistant for any sort of project they would reach out to yeah, you yeah they'll like, remember I, you yeah like i've had so many situations uh, for me or like for my friends that they just got an internship or a job because the professor knew them and they reach out to the student rather than the student reaching out to them which is great it's amazing for yeah. any student if they get to experience that 
amazing. Exactly. And we talked a little bit about like the jobs and the career path after graduation. Mm-hmm. Um, but can you give us like maybe a list of the jobs that this program prepares a student for? Uh, okay, I'd say the main big one that almost all the students would want to do is architecture technologist or an architectural designer. Yeah. Um, but there's also a lot of of this like niche uh, jobs that pay really well. There's a building code inspector, a permit reviewer. You could be a project manager. There's different jobs in 3D visualization, which is like rendering, 3D printing, 3D modeling, oh. uh, cl- point cloud scanning, which is like laser scanning or flying drones to uh, take pictures of buildings even. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. And like a, you mentioned like a architecture technologies. What does yeah. that really mean? If you want to simply explain it to someone who doesn't really know what architecture okay. is all about. So I'm sure everyone knows like what an architect is. Yeah. An architecture technologist kind of does other drawings. Um, mm-hmm. Let me see how I can simplify it. <laughs> There's like the b- blueprints, basically. You would okay. be helping to draw the blueprints. Maybe you might be tasked with like, okay, you draw all of the doors in this condo. And that's what you would do. Um, an architecture designer, you would be helping more of the on the design side but the technologist is kind of you'd be tasked with doing a drawing and you try that sounds very interesting although i don't understand exactly (laughs) but it sounds interesting for sure and you also mentioned that uh there are many jobs available after graduation there's many different jobs available um like a project manager it is a very good job but i just can't read like all of those fine texts and the courses mm-hmm. that are boring to me. Yeah. Well, it depends yeah. on the person, I guess. Yeah, it depends. But that's great to know. Like, in my last program, right now, my program is, like, the same. There are many opportunities, so that makes me happy. But my mm-hmm. last program, it was a program that was, like, it was very hard to get a job in that mm-hmm. field and industry. And that really made me stress out, kind of. But just knowing that there are many opportunities available, I feel like that's just going to let you, you know, focus on your studies rather than, like, worrying yeah. about anything else. That may come up so that's perfect for everybody who is planning on taking this um program i'd and- say um sorry to interrupt mm-hmm. i'd say like for this one it's uh there's so many jobs available the more of the issue is the like competition i guess to be mm-hmm. an architectural designer but if you do land like you can very much land the job it's just mm-hmm. competing with your classmates yeah for sure yeah well that's true for like any kind of career i guess like yeah. there are many people doing whatever you want to do but yeah. as long as you're like doing a good job and even doing good at school like that just shows that you are determined and you have like show that you're a hard worker and yeah. that's going to prove to everyone who's planning on hiring you that you're going to be a good addition to their team and of course, if you have a good portfolio, that's just a better thing as well. Yeah. Which is perfect. Amazing. And um, do you plan on doing any other types of programs after this? Or are you just going to get into the industry? I'm thinking of, like, I'm not closing the door on becoming a licensed architect. But licensed architect, you need a bachelor's and a master's. Mm-hmm. I don't think I would go straight into that right now. I think I would want to uh, maybe land a job for a year or two get some money and then because like a bachelor's and a master's is a lot of investment yeah um but to be a licensed architect like those are mandatory requirements and i think it would be nice to be an architect so amazing and is there like an option um to kind of bridge to a university maybe because you did the advanced diploma program or do you have to start from like um there is like a connection program i think it's Mm -hmm. with two uh, American schools like Boston and uh, Lawrence Tech University I think you would be put into like first year second year I mean second year or third year for their bachelors but you still have to also do the master's as well yeah yeah well it's better than starting from zero yeah from zero (laughs) if you can do that yeah And do you have any public social media accounts that you'd like to share to connect with our listeners after this episode? Or- Unfortunately, I used to have Instagram, but I actually mm-hmm. deleted it. I felt it was like too distracting for me. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I get that totally. That's okay. Yeah. Thank amazing. you. Of course. Amazing. So thank you so much um, for coming onto this podcast today. This has been really eye-opening for me. 
not knowing anything about architecture. And thank you to all of our listeners as well for joining us today for one more time for another program feature. Remember to stay tuned for our monthly student program spotlight interviews. There is going to be definitely more. We're going to talk to more students, more programs. So that's going to be definitely very exciting. And yeah, until next time, take care and stay safe and see you later. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was fun. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah.